Hi everyone, so potentially all our formal lessons are finished for the summer, so you've completed your first year, but we've just got this little bit of self-study left to do with uh, partial fractions. So if you look, I've worked through this works example, I'll change the colour on the print so you can see it better. So we've got our bit here where we do our partial fraction, so that's that part there, so you've got to do your partial fractions first. Then if you remember, there are two main uses for us with partial fractions. One of them is integrating, and the other one is using binomials to get an approximate expression for it, the type of thing your calculator uses when it works out with big uh, equations and stuff. So I've got my partial fraction expressed, so I've moved up the brackets and made them power minus one. Now each of these, if you look, each of these fractions is now a binomial expansion, which can be done. And this one says go up to the x cubed term, which is the first four terms. So it might also say a cubic approximation. Most exam questions only go up uh, to the first three terms, which is x squared approximation. Oops, I'm to move <coughs> but it's good to do the x cubed one, the fourth term, just in case. But most of them last for that. If you got it right in the first three terms, you're going to get it right in the fourth term. Right, so I've got the 1 plus x to the minus 1, which gives me this expansion. And we know with the 1 plus x, it's valid for between plus or minus 1. Then I've got the 2 minus x, so I took the 2 out, did the expansion, and I've got that. So I've got that expansion there. And that's valid for between plus or minus 2. So what I'm doing is this, I look at the overlap. And I've got one that goes to minus 1 and 1, and I've got one that goes to minus 2 and 2. So the overlap will just be between plus and minus 1, which is what this little bit down here says here. Let me expand the page a bit. Yeah. So there, that's the overlap between them. Now the question, if you look back to where we did our partial fractions, it was one of the partial fractions, one of the partial fractions plus another partial fraction, so it was the binomials added together. So if you look, I've just added my two binomial expansions together. And it's just nice, that, isn't it? It's not really bad at all. So just to recap, do your partial fractions, take the fractions up, so it's an index notation, and do binomial expansions on each one on its own. So look at the next page. I'm right sure there's a one for you. Here we go. So there's one for you there. So I'll show you the answer to it. So there's my partial fractions. I've made it into index notation, being really careful. Hopefully, when I review the next bit, they've done. So I tend to do these separately and then add them in, but they might have done the two at the front as well. But it's the same ones. Yeah, they do the two at the front. I wouldn't bother with the two at the front until the end. I just replaced the brackets. They've done the valids <coughs> for the overlap. Oh, it's not quite sure now. I think maybe this is down there. Yeah, so it shows you the valids for one of the expressions being between the plus or minus a third and a valid for the other one. Uh, which looks like it's the same. So overall, it'll be valid for a third. But then I think it says, can I use 0 0.4? I can't use 0 0.4 because it's outside of that range of 2 plus or minus a third. There, and then there's some questions to do. Right, well, well done, everybody. You've been absolute heroes. Um, I'll see you all after the summer holidays. Bye.